Hello everyone, welcome to day six of Ireland. I'm currently in Dublin and you may notice throughout this video that there's like these weird little glimpses that come across the screen like that. <laughs> Even though they do appear in like my videos at home, they seem more intense here and I think that's because I'm in a room full of mirrors. So I think there's some weird refractory stuff going on which is a more comforting thought than this hotel is haunted. So we're going to go with the mirror refractory explanation, yeah. <laughs> Today was the day of the big trek across Ireland from Killarney to Dublin. So we started off the day in Killarney. We had breakfast at the hotel there, uh, the Danube, I think it was called. The restaurant, not the hotel. The hotel was the Brennan. It's like I had a bit of a fuller breakfast. This was actually the first day I woke up with a headache. And it was also the first, it was following the first day in which I did not drink in Ireland. So that was kind of funny, actually. <laughs> From there, we checked out of the hotel and we got all our little bags and I could not fit everything into the bags that I brought, but I realized I didn't have to right away. By the time I check out of this hotel, I have to figure out a solution. That's part of what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to figure out some solution, whether that's cheap suitcase, vacuum bags, whatever yeah from there we drove straight to blarney so at blarney is the blarney castle with the stone with the blarney stone there's also woolen mills and most of the people were going to be staying at the woolen mills because the blarney stone is a bit of a treacherous hike most of the people on our tour were elderly ladies who were not up for that <laughs> who did not want to do it but i went to the blarney stone today there's someone else on the tour who also really wanted to go to the Blarney Stone and we knew that if we went together we could both book it because we were only given an hour at Blarney because they were trying to fit a lot of stuff into today. We arrived at 10 o'clock right when Blarney Castle opened and uh, we pretty much rushed to the castle and we kind of found our way pretty quickly. We got a map handed with us with our ticket just automatically. It was like, oh, what's this thick little thing? And it was the map. <laughs> Even without the map though, we found the castle pretty easily and by the time we actually had to like stand to wait, we were at the 30 minute mark, which was impressive. Like we sidetracked people and in a way, while it was impressive that we got there that quickly, it was a bit of a shame we couldn't walk further along, kind of meander around the grounds because there were a bunch of cool sites around the gardens, like there were caves and there were other things that would have been interesting to learn about. but. That's the gamble you take when you take a group tour, yeah? You have to do what the rest of the group wants to do for some of the items. Even if you do like go off your separate way, you do have times where you have to come back and sometimes you have to adhere to those times. We knew it was quite limited, so we went up to the Blarney Stone and we climbed into the castle and it was a much shorter trek than I was expecting it to be. Like any wait in Blarney is pretty much just because you're waiting with traffic. You are now part of the traffic and you have to wait for the traffic to move. But the actual climbing of the steps, while they were uneven steps and they were treacherous steps, there weren't that many of them. Like there were points where they were like super thin and they did have handy railings. So they had like rope railings along the inside of like the spiral staircase bit. And they did have metal railings attached to the walls. and. They also had like little signposts explaining things as we went along, which we went through the line pretty quickly. So. so we didn't have too much time to actually read the signs. We were just focusing on getting through so we could get through the experience in time, you know, and kind of try to make it back. But it's nice that those signs exist for people who have to wait in there for a long time. They have something to keep them entertained and something that kind of like does it. Well, kind of teaches them about the Blarney Castle. We made it up the steps and it was raining. It was like pouring by the, or close to pouring by the time we actually made it to the top outside part where it was the Blarney Castle. And there was a um, little, like, I'm not sure quite how the stone got there. So when I saw the uh, YouTube video of like the original patio area, I thought the stone was actually like facing in towards the courtyard. But no, it was actually like um, facing outwards towards the castle, towards the castle wall which was interesting. And uh, like they had a little pad there to make it easier to lean and they had two grips on the wall. So I kind of had to grip it and then lean my head back and then kiss the bottom stone. So I did it and it was less intimidating than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, I watched a YouTube video of someone else going through the Blarney Stone, but I could tell 
very easily. It was quite obvious that I was in better shape than the person who made the video. So for me, it was a piece of cake, but I also know I'm in relatively good shape. <laughs> and then the way back down was also pretty quick, although it was a bit slippery because it had been raining. And we got some good shots of it. Uh, the person I was with cat pretended to fire an arrow through the window. It was pretty funny. By the time we made it to the stone, it was like 11 o'clock. We we're supposed to leave by 11. The other person with me was there with, was on the tour with her mom. So she was texting with her mom telling her, hey, we're at this point of the stone, we're at that point of the stone, so that way the bus wouldn't leave without us. <laughs> and then uh, after we left the bus, like after we left the barnstorm and we left the castle, we hit the first bathroom that we found. And then we uh, tried finding the bus. We got lost in the bus park, even though the bus had not moved. <laughs> <laughs> but we entered the bus park in a different way. As we went on, the other ladies were going like, shame, shame, because we made it there by 1130. <laughs> in all honesty, if you're going to go to Blarney Castle and you're just going to go in and out, you need at least an hour and a half. If you want a chance to actually enjoy the grounds, you do need at least three hours. But we kind of threw off the schedule for the rest of the day. And I was like, yeah. Turns out they ended up having to cut out a stop later on in the tour and the stop was just a photo stop of another castle so to be honest I don't really feel too bad about it. <laughs> Going up to the Blarney Stone was absolutely worth it especially while I still have my health you know because I mean I hope to still be alive knock on wood at, at least as long as the lady as the fellow ladies that I'm taking the tour with and even longer in some cases and by the time I get that age, I may also have experienced some medical conditions that would make that less likely. So it's good to take advantage of that while I'm young, yeah. From there, we drove to the yarn shop. So there was another yarn shop there, and this was a fancier yarn shop than the rest of the yarn stores that we've been going to. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about this because I am making a separate video about all of the yarn that I'm buying in Ireland, as I'm sure you've heard me mention several times already if you've been watching my videos in order but what i can say is that most of the yarn stores in ireland are a part of other stores so they're usually part of like finished wool crafts and they're usually just like you only have a couple types of yarn and whatnot but this was a legit yarn store in the fashion that i was used to it and that there were several premium brand yarns and um fancy yarns and the whole store was dedicated to yarn. From there we went to a rest stop area like thing where uh, we had lunch. It was connect it was like a combination Circle K McDonald's. I personally do not eat at McDonald's due to various factors triggering my anxiety but there was a Circle K there so I was covered and having lunch was fun like I got like a chicken sandwich and I was able to find like a, a brand of chips that I'd never had before. And I was able to enjoy seeing the different brands that were all around. Like I ended up having a drink from a brand I never saw before either. I saw Ribena. I ended up asking what Ribena is. So I've been, I watch a lot of Taskmaster and with Taskmaster for some of the tasks they had the contestants drink something that they thought was Ribena. And I was like, what is that? Because like we don't get that in the States. And it turns out it's like um, a very concentrated form of squash. And it's often like, it's often orange flavored or black currant flavored. And the one I saw was black currant flavored. It sounds like they treat Ribena like how we treat Kool-Aid here or a concentrated fruit drink. From there we had like two, we had a two to three hour bus trip in the, down to Dublin. So by the time we hit Dublin, I mean, it was like traffic-ish, you know. Although the huge... The huge like hair raising thing was um, when we were trying to leave the Blarney Woolen Mills and this one bus would not let us pass and it's like the only time we've heard our bus driver get anything resembling angry he, where he's going like, hey, you have to back up. I cannot back up and we have to go on by and the, the other ladies in the bus kind of went into full Karen mode yelling at the driver that would not move. <laughs> and you know, it's like, it's kind of hilarious when you hear one of the other ladies just like turn around towards you and just reference like, just calm down. <laughs> it's like, we'll get there when we get there. Yeah, we ended up spending like about an hour in the yarn store, which was all that we needed. We had a nice long ride to Dublin, so I was knitting for a good amount of it. The person sitting next to me finished her fingerless glove. 
then she was reading her like Ireland legend book and she actually read me a story from it. <laughs> so uh, it was basically, I forget the name, it was like how Cool Coolin got his name. It's basically this one guy, this one well, boy, it's basically nine years old when the story started. He wanted to become part of the Red Knights and uh, his parents were saying no, he's too young. So then he ended up sneaking off and became a Red Knight. And then the king invited him to a feast, and he was late getting to the feast because he was too busy playing the game of Hurley. He ended up arriving late, and the person hosting the feast said his hound dog protect the castle, and the main character, Excelenta, didn't want to get killed by the hound dog, so he killed it with his hurling stick. The king was thankful that he was safe, but the other person hosting the feast was sad for the fact that he lost his dog, so the main character offered to become, to replace the hound and to guard the castle with his life. So he got his name because he's basically the owner of the castle, it's hound. <laughs> a cute little story. And then from there we pulled into our hotel. I ended up just going up to my room, dumping my stuff down, and then going straight to the dinner place. And I was going to go into the bar, but then I saw some other people from the tour go into the dining room. And like, there's a little group who makes reservations and they let me join in if I happen to be there at the time. So that was pretty cool. And it, this was like a fancy pants meal. Oh my gosh. Um, it's like looking at the menu. It's like, Oh, this is, this is a fancy place. Like I'm kind of underdressed in a t-shirt. <laughs> there was something on the menu called fever tree. So I decided to try it because I had no idea what that was. And it turns out it's tonic water. It's tonic water. It's like flavored with orange and like, has like a bitter taste to it it's kind of like a bitter ginger ale because <laughs> it has like the quinine in it the malarious stuff <laughs> i ended up ordering a chicken and uh, the chicken was good and the potatoes were amazing asparagus was okay i mean we were kind of worried about we wanted to make the appointment but our food was a little bit slow because they were expecting us to have a more casual meal but one of the other people who was there when we got our meal, she asked the person if we could just pay for it right then so that way we didn't have to wait for the check when we were done with our meal, which was a really smart idea because after our supper, we had another activity planned that we were really looking forward to. We were gonna meet up with some Irish knitters. So there's this Irish knitting group, it's called the uh, Drunken Knitwits of Dublin. <laughs> they came and knit with us which was a lot of fun. We got to speak with people from Ireland, and, or the, though not all of them were from Ireland. Like I did talk to someone who was originally from Spain and I talked to another person who was originally from Holland. It was nice to just like chat with them and like look at their projects and whatnot. We did play bingo um, with them. There were some prizes from the various stores. We went through the prizes relatively quickly, but even just pressing the bingo thing on the card, the way that they can generate bingo cards on the computer now is pretty cool actually. After that, we pretty much just knit and like talked and people went up and down to get drinks. I was just fine with my water at that point because I have a feeling I am a little bit dehydrated today. From there, uh, that kind of leads us to now where I just came back up to my room. And although I also did find out a couple of things. So like they told us about some things that we could find out that we could go searching for in Dublin tomorrow. Apparently we are really close to the Guinness factory by here something that I remembered. We're also really close to like a Sioux, another museum and like, although tomorrow we're also going to get dropped off in the city center if we want it. Like we have, we actually have a choice for what we want to do tomorrow. And one is, um, we can go down to a wool mill in Avoca and like learn about how that works, like the operating wool mill, or we can uh, stay in Dublin and do sightseeing there. And honestly, I'm feeling more sightseeing in Dublin because most of the sightseeing time in Evoke is going to be taken up by the bus and I may not be all yarned out yet, but I am kind of bussed out. <laughs> it's been a lot of bus driving the past couple of days. I think it's time for me to actually get up and walk around a little bit, explore the city that way. We just have to make it back for dinner tomorrow night, essentially. So pretty easy. Just have to figure out how things work. Yeah, another one of them at the meeting told me at the, but the Drunken Nitwits actually have a chapter in Philly, where I'm from. So it'd be interesting to look them up and see, like apparently it's their twin chapter, both the Dublin one and the Philly one started on the same day. It'll be interesting to see, like, to meet up with them there, like meet some more knitting buddies, you know? 
and actually do it a little bit closer to home. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much today. Like, uh, mo most of the action happened in the beginning of the day, and then I was just like a chill bus ride. Like, at, at this point, it's starting to, now, now that we've hit Dublin, it's starting to hit me that um, it's getting close to the end of the trip. We've only got a couple days left, and then it's back to real world, you know? I mean, this is real world, but like, non-travel world. Also, what was interesting about today is, uh, today is June 16th. I'm in Dublin during Bloomsday. <laughs> I have not seen any, like, James Joyce Ulysses related things because I pretty much came to Dublin and I've just stayed in the hotel. So there's not really much going on here. But just to say I've been in Dublin during Bloomsday, that's, that's pretty cool. I wasn't planning on that, but it, it's nice that it lined up that way. <laughs>